Hi everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Bees. I'm gonna show you how to make wire cages. So if you were traveling this summer, if you're getting uh, nice stones or pebbles that you're picking up, or if you wanna purchase some, I'm gonna show you how to wrap undrilled beads into wire. So gather up your materials, and remember if you need any, look below the video in the description. You can get links there to shop with us online if you do need some materials to do this project. So to do these wire cages, we're gonna be using 18 gauge wire. You can use 20 gauge for it. Anything smaller than 18 has the ability to kind of pull open because it's not as stiff. If you have a hard 20 wire, you can certainly try that or a stainless steel. Anything below 20 really is gonna to be too thin for this project. So I'm using 18 gauge. Now this is designed for beads that do not have holes or undrilled gemstones. I have some blue lace agate here and some amethyst, but I also just put an Amazonite pebble in there to show you that you can also use it to hold beads. If you want to, you can even grab a couple more beads sometimes if the cage is big, open it up, plop your beads into the cage. If you have three kids or something like that, you could make a little birthstone one, and then just make sure once you do this, you kind of fit them all in and then you make sure to close up your cage nice and tight. And now you can have a collection of beads inside the cage as well. So to get started, we're going to need a couple pliers. You're gonna to wanna to have your round nose pliers here, and you can see I've drawn a little face on mine, a wire cutter, and also I would definitely suggest a nylon jaw plier. If you don't have the nylon jaw plier, you can use the regular chain nose plier, but the nylon jaw is great because it doesn't mark up your metal. So the first thing that we're going to do is obviously I cut a piece of wire. So I took my wire cutter and I cut a piece of wire that's about 12 inches or one foot long. That's a good place to start if you're not exactly sure of the size that you want your cage. Keep in mind the technique that we're doing as the cage gets bigger, it's going to get wider as well. So if you have a tall, narrow stone, you may want to do this into a different shape, like a square shape. We're gonna be just doing circle today. I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers at the end of one piece of wire, and I'm gonna hold it where I can see the wire between the pliers, but I can't feel it coming out the top. And I'm just gonna do a simple rollover. I'm adjusting my wrist so you can see, just to make the tiniest little circle loop that I can make. Once I have that tiny little circle loop here, I'm going to put my round nose plier back in and just continue bending my wire till it overlaps itself a little bit. From here, I'm gonna go in with my nylon jaw plier, and here's how I'm gonna hold. That area where the wire, the new piece that I'm wrapping around just touched itself, that's where I'm gonna hold right against my plier. So you can see just that little tiny piece of wire coming through the plier there. From here, I'm going to hold down on the plier nice and tight, and I'm gonna bend the wire up toward the top of the plier. Reposition the wire so that it's at a 90 degree angle from the plier, bend up, reposition the plier. So you're gonna see this constant motion of bending the wire up and then repositioning the plier. What this does is it allows you to get a nice tight coil without a lot of space between all the different rows that we're doing. So you get that nice tight coil in there. Sometimes you can get to the point where you can roll it with your fingers. That works, but it will sometimes lead to a little bit of a funky shape. So I like to, as much as I can, keep it in those nylon jaw and make that circle bigger. When you have about the size of a dime, go ahead and flip over to the other side. We're gonna pick up the round nose pliers once again, and we are going to, once again, create a loop. So I'm just rolling it out in my round nose pliers till I have that nice little loop there. And then I'm going to, once again, continue that loop just the littlest bit. See how that loop is over top of itself? Once again, grab my nylon jaw pliers, and go ahead and start bending the wire into that rounded coil. And once you get going, it happens really, really quickly. As you're working with the wire, it will also heat up the wire and it'll become a little bit more malleable and then you can work with it a little bit more. And then as the wire cools from your touch, it gets a little bit harder. So once I have that dime size again, you can see this one's getting a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go back to the other side. We are coiling the ends towards one another and we want the size for this particular project to match. So as I get this bigger and bigger, 
Can you see that loop getting bigger and bigger? I'm going to go over here. Once again, start bending up this way. Bend towards the top here. And then same deal here. Bend towards the top. And you're going to eventually get to the point where you have your two lizard eyes there that you want the coils to turn towards one another. So see how the coils are naturally going to be one towards the top, one towards the bottom. I'm rolling these in towards one another, trying to maintain just with my fingers the distance and that roll between them that I want them to match up in size. So I'm turning them towards each other. Once you do that, look, you've got a little spring. This also works as a little picture holder if you wanna do a picture holder in there. But what we're gonna do now is we are going to open up our little cage. To open up our little cage, I'm gonna grab with my round nose pliers towards the front and just gently pull out a little bit on one side. From the other side here, and I'm holding in the middle, right near the connection point, I'm gonna gently pull out here. Go back to the other side, gently pull that out and see how you're getting that spring creation. And you want each little piece of your spring to be pulled out. And now what I have is my two springed sections right next to one another and I have that little cage. Now I can come over here, grab an amethyst bead, have these undrilled ones, open up the center of the cage, and I can start to manipulate the cage and push that wire, say, okay, I need that one to go down a little bit more. So I'm going to go back in here, open it up a little tiny bit more, get that cage a little bit bigger, go back in here, put the bottom of the amethyst in there, pop that top of the amethyst in. And you can see it just kind of sits inside the cage then because of that nice oval size. Bend your wires then so they can come down around the piece of stone or pebble or whatever. And now that is not going anywhere. From here, you have to decide how you're gonna use it. If you wanna use it as a link and put it on a bracelet or hang it down from an earring, you can certainly do that. You can put loops on both sides or you can put loops on one side. So the two samples here, I have loops just to the top. I'm gonna to go in with my round nose pliers again, grab that last complete loop. You can see all I'm doing is turning that up. That gives me a loop to attach a jump ring or a bail to, or we'll make our own. And then same thing at the bottom, if I want to attach a little squiggly or something down there, I can take this loop, I can bend it down. And if you need to, go ahead and grab your chain nose pliers and just bend them flat to get your little loop there. These are really fun too as little charm holders. You can do window holdings, do some, hang it from some ribbon, but you get that nice cage look for drilled or undrilled stones. Once you finish up with all your wire cages, you can see that you can display it on a necklace and do the beads that way, adding just a simple jump ring or soldered ring to the top. You can get creative with the bottom and add another little spring, just half of one of those to the bottom if you wanna do, like I said, a light pool or a like caged charm that you can have with the different gemstones and their chakras as well. So you can really have fun with this 18 gauge wire, creating these cages and these designs for a one of a kind look. Thanks so much for joining me and hopefully working on your wire skills to create these nice wire caged beads. They can be really fun to give as gifts since they are very much one of a kind. Remember, if you need any of the pliers or the wire, go ahead and check below the video. In the descriptions, we have links there to get back to our site to shop with us online. As always, if you have any tricks or tips for other community members, go ahead and comment below because that really helps to teach and inspire others, which is one of our main goals at Potomac Beads. As always, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for our next inspirational video.